ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series comes to you tonight from the famed Milwaukee Mile. It's the Camping World RV Rental 250 beginning just moments from now. Awesome. Andy Petrie, I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us here at the Milwaukee Mile. Guys, I'm going to give you your due here. Now, two weeks ago in our on-camera, you picked Brad Keselowski. Last week, you said Joey Logano was going to win. You were both right, but I'm going to put you on the spot tonight. Who among the young stars can break through with their, their first win here tonight? I tell you what, guys, I'm going to pick Colin Braun. This guy ran so good out there in Mexico City. He ran good in the truck race tonight. He's running good here. He's kind of a Wisconsin guy. I got to throw my own kid in there, though, Steven. I know I'm not supposed to do that, but I think he's got a good shot, too. You know, Colin Braun uh, making only his fourth ever start, set on the pole at Mexico. Yep. And, and what, how t what does it mean? I mean, for Brad Keselowski and for Joey Logano, who won now their first race, can they relax, or is it going to be easier now to win race number two? That's well, a big sigh of relief for them. They've been there. They've done it. Now it's finished. Now they can concentrate more, trying to just get in the rhythm, in the groove, in the zone, so to speak, and win more of these things. It's a battle for eight spot. At Colin Braun, our in race reporter, Jason Left or Jason Leffler. Get those Jasons mixed up all the time. And that's Jason okay. Keller, Jason Leffler. <laughs> I tell you, Colin, I picked him as a guy that could win this race, maybe a first time winner. Up here from Wisconsin area, and I watched him run up there in Mexico City. And man, this guy drove like a veteran. It wouldn't surprise me if he has a good top five, maybe even a you know top ten, maybe even a top five finish. Here's the 16. You talked about. Colin Brown, young man who sat on the pole in Mexico. He was homeschooled in his uh, his home. They had a go-kart track around their house, so he would get to go out during recess and drive go-karts as a kid. Mom and dad, his dad is an engineer for an open-wheeled uh, road racing team, so he grew up around racing, had a steering wheel in his hand from the time he was four years old. It's and it's of, paying off now. It's kind of like Pop said, hey, we're going to keep you at home. We're going to keep you at the racetrack. And I can't sing the school, so we're teaching right here. Keep your head in the game. So that's, that's a pretty cool way to do it. Battle for eighth position here. Jason Leffler, I mean, pardon me, the 16 car. That is Todd Brown. Colin Brown, I should say, and David Strimmy. And he, I know it is spelled Braun, but it is pronounced Brown. It's Colin Brown. Whoa, Strimmy trying to stay out of the back of that four. And you see, guys, Strimmy's trying to keep that nose down underneath him, get that clean air, so to get good downforce on, especially on this flat racetrack. Guys, it is everything in the world to try not to follow a guy. You want that air going to your nose to help that thing turn. It's like Strimmy's car is a little bit loose. You can see how he's going back and forth on the steering wheel and not able to stay underneath the 16 car of Colin Brown. Here is the battle now for ninth spot as Strimmy again trying to get underneath the Ford of Colin Brown. Well, he's not giving up on this battle. He finally got him here. Well, here comes Brown on the outside. <laughs> Just started to say, got a lot of momentum <laughs> on the outside, and uh, it's not over till you clear him. It looks like he's finally cleared him now. Okay, and just, uh, just impressed with the job Colin Brown's doing. I mean, he's kept himself out of trouble the whole time. Still looking good out there, guys. Hard to imagine this young man in the 16 is this is only his fourth ever start in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. He had one at Memphis a year ago. He was at Nashville, set on the pole at Mexico City, and now here at Milwaukee. Oh, you see Bush are getting way high in this corner. But one thing about Colin Brown, he's been running the truck series some, getting some experience, and that's really kind of a, a great feeder series the trucks are for, for these guys that are coming along. Yeah, I totally agree with you, because the truck series, those guys are very aggressive. I mean, they got to learn how to slam and bam and move guys out of the way, and he's been in a pretty rough atmosphere in that truck series. That just happens, and so Colin's doing a great job out there. Hey, Mike, this kid's looking pretty good. Yeah, he is, and you guys mentioned his experience in the truck series. Well, this weekend is kind of something different for him. It's the first time he's run double duty. Of course, he ran the truck race here last night. Didn't fare all that well, was caught up in an incident, ended up 31st, but he says he'd race every day if he could. He sees the value in seat time, and he knows that uh, the more he races, the better off he'll be right now. He's battling a bit of a tight race car, but still hanging in there. I think that everybody's battling a tight race car out there right now as the track cools down. That's the biggest complaint you get at this racetrack. I think they're battling a tight track. This track is really has that characteristic because it's so flat, it's so hard to get the front end of the car to turn. Trouble on the racetrack, Shannon. The 16 car, Colin Brown, has spun around. And Colin Brown they, uh, brings out uh, caution number four. Off. 
Caution number four on the night for Colin Whatever Brown. hit on the right side with the nine car. Tell him thanks, man. Looks like he and Chase Miller must have gotten together. This is going to set up uh, kind of an interesting situation because we've got 102 laps to go. These guys can maybe run 90 laps. Some of them can run as, as far as 90 laps on fuel. Show you what happened here to the 16. Uh, there's the nine, Chase Miller. And, you know, that's just a classic case of running out of room like we saw early in the race with Clint Boyer. You know, Chase Miller was coming from the top of the wall down his normal line. And Colin got his nose in there and went, wait a minute, I thought Chase was going to stay up, and it didn't happen that way. Neither one of these guys fought this thing right here. There's the wheel mark on the left side of the Dodge for Chase Miller right on the nine. Yeah, the only problem here is I think the nine car should have given him the line. He was a lap down, and the 16 car was a lead lap car. I think he expected a little bit more room there when he got yeah, there. Yeah, you're probably right. That's where the spotters get involved in and say, hey, man, he's a lap down. You know, here he comes. Stay high, stay low. Let's listen into the nine car radio for Chase Miller. I'm having trouble with my radios. I uh, had to try to change batteries. That spare radio they gave me was uh, NFD. My bad there, bud. I was panicking trying to get everything sorted. Yeah, I had no clue you there. He was referring to that last caution with the contact between him and the 16 car. Oh, Colin Brown oh, in the wall. Colin Brown again. Caution number six. Doesn't look like he's got much damage. The right front fender's bent in. Yeah, he does have some damage. Yeah. There. You can see. What the heck was that? Looks like the toe end might be knocked out on the right front. Boy, if it's knocked out on the right front, that takes time to fix. Can knock those fenders out, but boy, when you got to get underneath that car, Andy, and work on it, that's tough. Yeah, he's got a little bit of problem. They're going to have to work on that. Try to get those wheels going the same direction. Yeah, it looks like that left rear tire is flat, too. I just wonder if that was going down. Now you can see the Take paint rubbed off that left rear. I'd say somebody got into the side. Looks like it was Kale Gale. Ooh, that's when you just get loose going at the corner when you're laying your right side against that guy's left side. Makes that car really loose. Kale Gale just got loose and got up into him. Let's take a look at this here. Oh, see it walk the back around right up in the column. Well, for the second time tonight, Colin Brown is in the wrong place at the right time and ends up being a victim and brings out the yellow flag for the sixth time. 